All right, I'm going to make a tutorial video on how to do the linear advanced calibration with a little bit more specificity, a little bit more resolution uh, as far as finding the exact linear advanced number that you should be using rather than just ballparking, uh, you know, 30, 35, 40, somewhere in that range. Uh, you know, this will be able to tell you if you need 36 or 37 or 38 um, and get it down to exactly what you need. So. Uh, I did this for the first time just the other day with an ABS uh, that I was working with that I was having a little bit of problem um, having some inconsistent colors and non-round holes and my corners were inconsistent. Some were sharper than others based on layer speeds and stuff like that. Um, so it occurred to me that my linear advance, which was set at 40, my K-factor, um, may be incorrectly calibrated. And I decided I was going to try to dig into the K-factor calibration test a little bit more. So. Uh, I'm going to start from the top. You can see here I've already got a file open, um, which is the one that I modified the other day. And I'm going to have it, uh, I'm going to pull it up and kind of show a comparison between the new file um, that I'm going to be putting together right now and then what I made the other day, which is kind of finalized and has a couple more small changes um, that I don't know if I'll remember to just make them off the top of my head right now. So just for reference sake, I'll, I'll compare to that in a minute. Um, but pull up a browser, um, go to Google, whatever your favorite search engine is, and linear advanced calibration if you just search that. Um, and then look for the Mats Hub link. And if you scroll down in the Mats Hub linear advanced article, um, you'll see down here a, a link to a K factor test G code. Um, he explains a little bit where it came from, gives credit to the creator. Um, but we're just going to download that G code file. Um, go ahead and open it up and unzip it. So once you've got it unzipped, um, open it with whatever your preferred text editor is. Um, I'm using Notepad++, which is a free software. And this should be what it looks like. So um, pretty typical starting G-code lines. Um, all of this is very similar to what the original slicer G code looked like. I think there's been a little bit of changes now. Um, I know if you're using the Warcocky profiles that generally he will start at 160, um, which this one already is. I may have the wrong one open. Let me close these out. Hang on here. I'll reopen this one. So we're starting with just what you would download. So yeah, this one's set up for PLA whenever you download it from Matt's Hub. Um, but I'm going to be doing PETG today. Um, the other day I did ABS, so I had these um, numbers changed around a little bit, and it's all well labeled, so it's pretty obvious which ones you want to change. Um, but the the most, I guess, critical thing that you want to do um, right off the bat is this modification that uh, Chris has in his profiles where. Um, you don't heat the extruder up to extrusion temperature until after you do the mesh bed leveling um, down here. So the reason for that is it tends to ooze a little bit whenever it's heating up and you want to wait until after your mesh bed leveling so you don't have that uh, little bit of filament hanging out potentially blocking your penda or um, getting in the way of something. So set that to 160, um, set whatever bed temperature you're going to be using for PETG, I'm going to be somewhere around 85. I actually haven't used this particular PETG yet, so I don't know exactly what it'll be. But for the sake of the video, we'll do 85. And then uh, I'm just going to move this wait for extruder temp line. I'm going to cut it out of there. And uh, we already told it to initialize going to 160. Um, and then we're doing the bed temp. And since the extruder is much faster generally than the bed, and we're only going to 160, it will be there. Um, already by the time this thing, this bed reaches 85, so no need to have the wait command really. Um, not to say that you shouldn't have it for other applications, but for right now I think we're safe to go ahead and move it down to after the mesh bed leveling line. So I'm just going to drop that right in there. Um, probably for PETG I'm going to be in the 270, 280 range, um, so I'll just set this to 270. and. Um, here, I already made a mistake, so I'm going to cut that again. I don't want it immediately after the mesh bed leveling. I want it to be after it goes outside of the print area immediately before it does the intro line. So I'm just going to move that down one more line and then uh, 
what will happen is basically whenever you start the print, um, it'll go ahead and set the um, nozzle temperature to 160. That should heat up fairly quickly. It'll set the bed temperature to 85, and then it'll sit and wait for that bed temperature to hit 85 before it goes on. Um, then it'll do your mesh bed leveling, and it'll move just to the front of the print bed, and then it'll sit and wait until that nozzle gets up to 270. So that's where it's. This is where we're at right now. And then it'll do its intro line, which um, Chris also has his differently now in the Workaki profiles, where it does a purge bubble at the beginning. Um, I like the purge bubble; it makes it a little easier, I think, to remove that line. But it's not really necessary, so we're just going to leave it out for right now. A um, couple little kind of housekeeping things here: setting units and things like that. Uh, does this at a 0.2 layer height, which is fine regardless of nozzle size. When I did this the other day, I actually was using a 0.6 nozzle, um, which it occurred to me today that probably the reason I was having inconsistent um, results with the test, I was having broken lines. So whenever it got down here to actually printing out these lines um, to test the different K factors, um, sometimes the lines would be broken and they would be extremely thin and hard to remove from the bed. So probably one reason for that is the 0.6 nozzle. Um, this is set up for a 0.4 nozzle, so it's going to be extruding just a little bit less um, than a 0.6 nozzle at a 0.2 layer height. So, um, anyways, one thing I did to fix that with a 0.6 nozzle, and you may want to do that, you may not. Um, it depends on how the test goes for you. These, this command right here, E0.37418, is telling the extruder how much to extrude. Um, and you can see here that it's the same um, for every one of these. Every time you've got this M900 where it's changing the K factor, um, you basically repeat these four lines over again. Um, so it's just doing a, a short amount of extrusion at a, a relatively slow speed, which for reference up here it tells you is 20 millimeters per second at F1200. And then a little bit more um, at should be a higher speed. I'm not really sure. Um, Oh, I see. Uh, my mistake, my mistake. This, so this this line right here is moving to the next test line um, at your slow speed, and then it'll do all in one line. It does a slow movement, and then it does a, a you know about three times faster movement, and then another slow movement. And uh, it makes sense that this this line that's highlighted right now and the one two above it have the same e command, the same amount of material is going to be extruded for those because they're moving at the same speed and the same distance. Um, so anyways, if you do this test and you find that you don't have enough um, plastic being extruded and it's hard to clean it off of your bed afterward, you can take these numbers. I'll start at the top here, this 037418, and I'm just going to copy and paste that into my calculator and then multiply by 1.1 to increase it by 10%. And then you would take that number. Um, I don't know if it's OK to increase the number of significant digits that are used. So I parsed that down, rounded it to uh, 0.4116 whenever I did the modification uh, the other day. So you would just basically take that number and punch it in here, 0.4116. And then everywhere below that uh, that has the same number, you're going to want to change all of those as well so that you have a consistent um, amount of con extrusion at all these different spots. So I'm not going to go through and manually change every one of them right now. I just kind of want to show this as a principle of how to make that change. Um, of course you could do this the same thing and multiply by 1.15 or uh, 1.2, whatever you want to do. Whatever you think is appropriate uh, in order to have the appropriate amount of plastic coming out during this test. Um, so once you've done that, uh, run your test, and it'll it'll use the K factors that are already you know set into this G code, and you'll end up with um, let's see one two three four five six seven eight nine ten ten lines, um, and each line has a different um, K factor. So you can compare between the lines, and what you're looking for is the line that is the same width all the way across. Um, so Without the appropriate k-factor, basically uh, what happens is the pressure in the nozzle does not remain constant. So you will have subtle changes in the thickness of the um, plastic line that's laid down. 
and that's not good whenever you're doing corners or you're doing high speed um, any kind of details or, or anything like that on your print and I'm not exactly sure the mechanism that it works by but it seems to affect the color consistency on my prints as well um, I'm sure it has to do with pressure in the nozzle obviously since that's all this has to do with but I'm not really exactly sure how that works out but anyway so you run the test and say um, you see that somewhere between you know the fifth line and the sixth line is almost exactly um, you know consistent all the way across it may be not quite perfect on this line and not quite perfect on this line so what's recommended in this article um, if you read through here is to just kind of find where the range is and if it's not perfect at either one shoot for the middle and do you know if it was between 40 and 50 do 45 well in the pursuit of having a, a good print um, I, that wasn't enough for me so what I did once I identified that range say we we'd actually is between 40 and 50 I went back in here and modified these to um, start at 40 and then you do um, change each one of these by an increment of 1 rather than 10 so 41 and 42 43 so on and so forth until you get all the way down to the bottom now on mine I found that uh, to get all the way to 50 which probably isn't necessary but I'm a little OCD so I wanted it to go all the way to 50 um, you have to add an extra line and if you follow the Y coordinates on these they're just increasing by 10 and then the X coordinates follow the same pattern but inversely for every other line so that uh, your X is moving back and forth rather than just constantly moving in a positive direction across the build plate um, so if you want to add another line at the end um, just copy a whole section of it um, hit enter and paste it in there and then you'll want to change your Y coordinates for every one of those lines to be 10 greater um, than whatever the previous line that you have is so um, it's not laying that same line over the previous line that way. Um, so once you've done all that, um, you run this G-code again, and you'll be able to see the difference between a K-factor of 40, 41, 42, 43, so on and so forth, until um, 50, I guess, or whatever you know the range is that you want to look for. And you can really narrow down um, exactly what you want your k-factor number to be and I I personally am going to be doing this for every single one of my filaments for now on um, it's it made a tremendous difference um, on my ABS which I'll go ahead and pull it up now just so you can see here's a screenshot of what I did ultimately with all of the starting g-code um, I'm kind of an open source jerk so I deleted the guys um, name tag off the top and just had it you know, playing with just straight g-code um, and I guess I did not save where I, I went it down. I changed it down to individual, you know, one, two, three, four, still at the tens here. But this should be modified and set up at the top um, to where it doesn't have the ooze and all that. So this is this is my final modification at the top if you want to try to mimic that. Um, but anyways, uh, it made a tremendous difference on my parts. I had much better corners, much more consistent colors, um, much rounder holes in the Z direction and uh, all around just a better looking part so if there's any more questions post your comments and i'll see if i can explain them apparently i'm not the best at explaining things in text um, hopefully i did a little better with this video but uh, anyways hope this helps